Welcome back to A20 Special Relativity. In this section, we talk about space-time diagrams. They turn out to be very useful tools to describe events or sequences of events, in particular when observed by multiple observers. So what is a space-time diagram? Here's an example. Um, you have an x-coordinate and a t-coordinate for space and time. Uh, I plotted an event uh, in blue here and the world line of, a, of events. A world line is just a sequence of events as they, they occur. Um, in this case, um, something seemed to be moving with constant velocity. The world line is just a continuous line. The velocity of this event is delta x over delta t, which is 1 over the slope. Let's uh, have a look here. So the time axis is defined as those events which all occur at the same space, x equals zero, while the x-axis is defined as those events which all occur simultaneously at the same time. And then you can draw additional lines into uh, the time space-time diagram where, for example, all times are equal to one. You might want to add a unit. I omitted this here. Uh, time might be given in seconds, in days, in hours, in years, whatever you like, uh, similar to space in meters or light years. So lines here in green of the same time, meaning time is constant, they happen, all events on that line happen simultaneously. While in blue are those lines where events happen at the same location, so x is equal constant, some specific value. Um, here in red, I add one additional caveat, which you're typically not aware or considering very much um, in diagrams, is the role of tick marks. Um, here in this space-time diagram, all tick marks are perpendicular to the axis. It's also okay or correct here to say that they're in parallel to the second axis, and we'll come back to this point later on. An example um, of a word line is simply, you know, drawing all events which correspond to me, right? Professor Kluter is pacing in his office. Um, you know, maybe on a line, just the X coordinate is plotted here, time passes, and I'm just pacing along, changing direction each time, each little segment with constant velocity. That's the word line of me from some time T equal minus T to time, time equal 40. Okay, so now a first concept question. Let's consider those, uh, the set of word lines, one, two, three, four. And the question is, which of the objects which correspond to the word line is moving the slowest? So let's consider this for a second, and then we look at this. As the velocity is one over the slope, the object with the steepest slope, the largest value of the slope, is moving the slowest. And in this case, it's object number two. All right, now we want to actually make them useful. Um, yes, they can be used in order to describe certain event lines, but they're really use, useful when you describe events happening for a different observer. So in this activity, I invite you to draw Bob's space-time diagram into Alice's, and then as a second step, draw Alice's space-time diagram into Bob's. The situation is very similar to previous ones discussed in this lecture. Alice is stationary, and Bob moving in this rocket with a velocity of half the speed of light, light or a gamma factor of 1.2. All right, try, go ahead, so try to, to um, show where is the time axis for Bob and where is the uh, spatial coordinate for, for Bob. Okay, so the way to approach this is the following. I want to use Lorentz transformations in order to figure out what is the value um, <coughs> of Bob's um, time axis and space, space axis uh, for different values of Alice's space-time diagram? So we start with drawing Alice's space-time diagram. And then if you want to find the x-axis as seen by Bob, we have to set the time for Bob to equal zero. And then find the uh, corresponding uh, elements or tick marks on the axis. So the first point we want to find is TB equals zero and TB at XE, XB equal one. 
So with the Lorentz transformation, we find that xA1, so this point corresponds in Alice's space time diagram to uh, xA equal gamma equal 1.2 and TA equal gamma times V over C, C square equal 0 0.6. So we can make this, uh, find this first point and plot it in our diagram. It's right here. Okay, and then we move around and find the second point and the third point. And we do the same for the time axis where XB is equal to zero and TB equal one then corresponds to 0 0.6 in XA1 and 1.2 in XA2. So we find these points here. I failed to say that the origin of those two space-time diagrams coincides. Okay. Um, so this is already it. So we found, found um, Bob's time axis where XB is equal to zero and Bob's uh, x-axis where TB is equal to zero. And I did draw those, um, those stick marks parallel to the second axis. So if I want to now find out um, the time axis for xb equal one, I just have to follow along and draw a parallel um, in the picture here. All right, so the que second question then is, where is Alice's, where are Alice's axis in Bob's space-time diagram? So the procedure is very similar as before. We, we draw Alice's axis, uh, sorry, we draw Bob's axis and we find Alex's axis, x, x axis by setting TA equals zero. And then we find the number of points um, and connect those. And the time axis is found by setting XA equals zero and finding then uh, points for various values of time. And you see here, this looks a little different than before. I just zoom in here a little bit. Um, what you find specifically because relative the direction of motion changes, the positive values of X are in um, positive value, uh, in negative, the, po the positive values of the X axis are in the negative time direction, while the negative values of X are in the positive time, time, the time direction, should be a corresponding here. So this needs a little bit to get used to, um, but you will later see. If I now draw um, in any of the two uh, space-time diagrams a specific sequence of events, I can immediately read off uh, how this event is perceived from Bob's and from Alice's perspective. And this makes our space diagram very, very useful tools.